Hey everyone, this is Gary. I'm back with another master list. I have a master list of herbs that I use for myself. So this is one of my master list herbal recipes. Doesn't mean it's right for you. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to be a doctor. I don't even play a doctor on TV. But these are the things that I use to help strengthen my body and the strength in my body will eliminate the weakness. That's something I find that we need to do more and more is focus on how to strengthen our body instead of focusing on the weaknesses in our body. So today we're going to start with an amazing herb. It is marshmallow root. Marshmallow root is one of the best all-around herbs I believe that I have found and that doesn't mean there aren't some out there but I use a very limited herbal list. Another one we're going to be doing alfalfa and uh, the third one see if we can get that so you can see it is skullcap. <clears throat> so as I go over these we're going to talk about how these herbs strengthen the body and the weaknesses that they will help the body eliminate. But first, I thought I would show you what we do with our old tea grounds. Now this is uh, like a French roast coffee maker and we make our tea in it. And we put this around it to help hold the heat in. <clears throat> and if you're wondering about that frog in my voice, uh, that is from a cold and flu-like symptom from detoxing. So, what we do with this, and I'll rinse this off in the, in the sink and wash it later. We don't need to do that in the video. This is gold mine right here. This is our compost bucket. We have six worm farms and we have our herbal garden outside and we grow uh, regular things out there too like tomatoes and that kind of thing. But we take this and anything that's green still has nutrients in it. So we give that to the garden or we give it to the worms. And then I'll wash this out later. But this compost bucket is something that we all need to get into because as we take from the earth, we need to give back to the earth. And that's something that we have not done for generations. And I'm just gonna put this over here for right now. Rinse my hand off a little bit. <coughs> Because this is a working kitchen, it's uh, it's not a showroom kitchen, and we have one camera. We don't have three. I have an opportunity to do that, and I may do that later. But for now, we're going to show you. I believe there's my water pitcher. There it is over there. So now that I have my pitcher of water, I'm going to show you how I measure the water to boil the marshmallow root in. And remember, that has to boil for 20 minutes. So, I have this little uh, pot here that we're gonna boil that in. So that's a cup, and that's about a half. Turn the water on. And we're going to, there's two ways to do this. I can let it boil and put the water and put the herb in for 20 minutes, or I can put it in now and do it for like 25 minutes. Probably take it five minutes to heat that water up. So, <clears throat> While that's doing its thing, heating up, 
Let's go over some of the things that these herbs are good for. We'll start with alfalfa since it's first in the book. <coughs> alfalfa is high in chlorophyll and nutrition. Uh, it has high minerals and trace minerals. It's a body cleanser. Enhances the endocrine gland system. And it will uh, help eliminate retained water carbon dioxide, and it helps with uh, alcohol, smoking, narcotics, uh, excuse me, narcotic addiction. And it helps eliminate like lead, aluminum, mercury uh, from the body, so it's a great heavy metal detoxer. And the reason I keep going back to the book to read these, it's not that I don't know a lot of this stuff, it's that people think that they have to know right off the top of their head about all these different things and that's not true. It's always good to go back to the book to make sure. So every time I do even my own formulas I go to the book. If I need something for my eyes then <clears throat> bilberry right here is a good one. And I mean everything is all laid out right here for you. That's why this book is such an important book to own. Uh, what are we going to go to next here? We're going to marshmallow root next, which is one of the most versatile herbs I have found. And like I said, I don't know that it's the best one. I don't know that it's the only one. I know that this one is amazing. Okay, so it's an anti-inflammatory. Works with the gastrointestinal tract. It's good for uh, colitis, diverticulitis, ulcers, cancer. Uh, it's great for the GI tract. And it helps, it puts a lining on the whole internal body, but basically, the, or more importantly, the GI tract to help the body, puts a protective layer on it to keep the acids and, and all the little bacteria in there from eating away at the lining of, of different parts of your GI tract and your intestinal tract. Uh, it's a great for healing wounds. Uh, and like I said, I'm just skipping through this, but it's good for uh, sinus, tonsils. It's a great mouthwash. Uh, it's good for the vascular system, the liver, the pancreas. Uh, it's high in calcium and lime. It's great for the skeletal structure itself. Uh, it's been used successfully in gan as, uh, to help people who have gangrene, uh, cough, laryngitis, respiratory congestion, and it's good for boils and abscesses and skin conditions and I mean, it just goes on and on what, what this is good for. You don't find many herbs that are good for such a range of things. So when I'm building a formula for me, the best thing to do is, okay, what's my condition? Are my eyes bothering me? Okay, so I'll go to, to Bilberry. There are other ones in here too. Uh, <coughs> but it's important to think about what's off, or your adrenals low. Licorice root is amazing, that's on my master list. Uh, lymphatic cleanser would be cleavers, there's many, but cleavers is one of my go-to. Part of the reason it's my, one of my go-to's is it's available in my area. And I have cleavers growing in my garden. I have plantain, I have rosemary, I have uh, Comfrey, I have so many. I believe I have some alfalfa out there. And uh, parsley, I have a lot of parsley. So let's move on. Once you uh, get Dr. Moore's book, you can read these, and if you want to memorize them, you can, but I always say, why memorize when you can realize by just going through the book and 
taking a, a, just a few herbs, and that's another thing, is we put way too much herb in our teas rather than ask our body how much it wants. If it wants a lot, give it a lot. But if it doesn't, just relax a little by asking. So that was the marshmallow. And the other one we're going to do is Skullcap. So Skullcap <clears throat> is for circulation, head, hands, and feet. So that's really important to remember. And it's a good added, an add-on with the marshmallow root. So it's good for brain, nerves. Uh, it also is a painkiller. It helps uh, reduce and sometimes eliminate spasms, cramping, convulsions, uh, insomnia and restlessness, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, uh, dizziness, spinal cord injuries, alcohol withdrawal. I mean, these are these are really important things and it's right here and when you look at the price of some of this stuff and how long it's going to last you because everybody thinks that being organic costs a fortune well it can if you if you are going to the stores all the time and buying things now that we're paying retail for this marshmallow root now that's not an ounce that's in there but an ounce is three dollars and that that's uh, not an ounce not quite. Alfalfa, two dollars. And the skull cap is three seventy five. But this is way more than an ounce too. But it's three seventy five for one ounce. And an ounce will last a long time. <clears throat> Another great uh, upper circ, brain and nerve, head, hands and feet circulation. Uh, herb is ginkgo but it doesn't have the ability to eliminate pain like skullcap does so that's why I use skullcap so our water starting to just starting to bubble a little bit and I didn't get the lid to, usually you put a lid on here it'll heat up faster so I'm gonna put the marshmallow root in now and I'm going to show you how I determine how much of this is going in that water. So I'll be right back as soon as I change this camera. Okay, so <clears throat> marshmallow root. Get a spoon out here. You can also, and probably a good idea, to use a wooden spoon. You can use metal. How many millions or of people use metal spoons? And but to protect yourself even a little bit more is important. So water is actually boiling now. Is this enough marshmallow root? No. Would you like more? Yes. So what we're going to do is. Is this enough? Do you want more? Yes. Even with what I put in there? Yes. So my body wants this big time. Is this enough? Yes. Is it too much? No. Uh, yes, it is. So let's a little back. Is this enough? Yes. Is that too much? No. Okay, so that's how much we're going to have in here. <clears throat> and that was about... Uh, two and a half of these in like a metal spoon it probably would have been kind of a heaping but not a gigantic heaping spoon of marshmallow root let me see if I can show you what I'm what I'm thinking here So with a metal spoon, I probably would have put in that much.
<clears throat> and then we'll put the alfalfa and the skull cap in after this boils for 20 minutes and we'll let it steep for like 10 or 15 so I will see you in about 20 minutes okay we're back it's been 20 minutes time to put in the alfalfa and you can turn this to low you can turn it off however you want to do it I turned mine off because it's gonna it's gonna steep plenty good enough so alfalfa is this enough is this enough well once more alfalfa I guess I need a bigger spoon alfalfa is this enough yes is this too much no Okay, so that's how much alfalfa we're going to have. And again, we're going to let that steep for 10 15 minutes. And now, the skull cap. This is what we just put in alfalfa. And depending on what, uh, let me get this first. Skull cap, is this enough? No. Is this enough? Yes. Okay. Now that I have it all in there, I'll use a spoon to stir it. Because if it gets wet, then it kind of defeats the purpose. We won't be able to get as much out. Kind of messes up when you try to take it out of the bag. So, <clears throat> now we have a skull cap and our alfalfa and our marshmallow root in here and we'll let it steep for a few minutes I'm going to adjust the camera again okay so once that steeps we'll have a great cup of tea that's good for upper cirque brain nerve it's good for sinus throat tonsils respiratory system endocrine gland system digestive system, urinary tract, I mean, all in one cup of tea. Now you see how much I used of that. It's very little compared to the cost of the herb. And you're not really going to do much better. Now, <clears throat> this is something I don't think I've gone over in any other videos, but if you have an issue with your eyes, then you look in Dr. Moore's book. And you'll see things like bilberry. This is pretty expensive compared to most. This is seven dollars an ounce, and there isn't much. That that's pretty close to an ounce. What's in that bag is pretty close to an ounce. These are actually berries, and they're from uh, the UK. Another thing is when you see Tulsi someplace. You see Tulsi. Another name for it is holy basil. Same product. And this is uh, $4 for an ounce. And what's in this is two ounces. So this, this isn't quite an ounce, but it's very close. But that'll last you quite a while. Especially if, if you're looking to enhance the body, to strengthen the body. We always want to put herbs in that do a general strengthening. And we don't want to overload a specific area. So this afternoon, if I do a cup of tea, it'll have different ingredients. I might have marshmallow root again. It'll probably have licorice root. So I'll boil that for 20 minutes and then steep whatever I put with it, which might be cleavers and maybe dandelion, something like that, or Tulsi. Horsetail is another great herb. And that's usually growing along uh, wet areas, along streams. So you can go out and harvest it. And it has a lot of uh, silica in it. So it's great for your body. So for now, I'm just going to shut this off and 
I'll see you in about 15 minutes. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> and I just noticed too, I have some marshmallow root powder. And as you can see, there's quite a difference between the two. So this I would boil for the 20 minutes. And this I would put in a capsule to take it. it does the same thing. And this is uh, $3 an ounce. And there's just about an ounce in there. Roots are particularly heavy. So I have my handy dandy little strainer here that I'm going to use. I'm going to adjust the camera and I'll show you how I pour it in the cup. Basically, that's it. And there we have one cup of tea. So I hope you found this helpful and that you got some tips about mixing your own herbs together. And it's not something that you should be afraid of by any means. You could put 10 different herbs in here if you wanted to, but the more you put in, the less potent each one will be because you're getting less of each. But the most important thing is to feel your body. Healing is feeling. Man, I feel energized today. I feel really tired today. Uh, I just ate a huge meal and I feel so full. Uh, I feel like I could run a mile. Those are, those are the common things that we, we are always talking about our feelings and they are a direct link with our body communicating with us to tell us what's going on. So I feel sick, I feel nauseous, I, feel, I have a headache. That's a feeling. And it's a sign of the chemistry being off in your body. Because each cell is a mini you. It eats, it digests, it absorbs, and it poops. And that poop goes into the interstitial fluid around that cell. So it's living in that environment. So if you were going to the bathroom or the toilet all the time, you never flushed it to clean it out, it'd get pretty gross. Same thing for your cells. They go through the exact same things. And the lymphatic system comes up and pulls that waste away over into the lymph nodes and it goes down through the lymphatic system and is flushed out through the kidneys. So it's important that you're filtering. And the best way to check is just pee in a mason jar, set it on the shelf for a couple hours, four, whatever, and there should be some white sediment either floating in it or in the bottom. Um, it's really important that that is happening. And I know that the medical doctors don't talk about that, but it is extremely important. And you can check two or three times a day, you can check two or three days in a row, because like everything in the body, some days it's filtering well, some days it's not filtering so good. Some days it's not filtering at all, and those, that's not a good thing. Your body needs to be filtering. The other thing I wanted to cover was <clears throat> each cell, let me, uh, let me say it this way. So a man has cells, and they're known as sperm, and women have cells, known as eggs, and when the two of those unite, they create a cell. And what do cells do? They divide. So in this female form is this cell now that's growing, and when it gets to a certain size, it splits, and it keeps splitting and splitting and splitting and splitting, until there is a baby in there that's ready to split from the mother, to divide. So we have a bunch of cells 
that created a bunch of cells that divide and now you have two people. That is how simple this all is. And how you feed those cells is going to determine how healthy you are and how healthy that baby is. So that's why proper herbs like God's herbs, live food, and live liquids are so important. Most of us are dehydrated and we're chronically inflamed in our bodies. And we need to alkalize that, hydrate that, and help the body flush it out. That's where these teas and things come in. Uh, fruits, berries, melons, vegetables. I mean, they're, they're alive. Eat them raw, right off the tree if you can. Pick and eat, because the life force energy is still in it. It's really important. So, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. But first, let's just try this tea. It's very good, very good. And extremely good for your body. And think cells. This is not just good for your body, it's good for the cells of your body. Instead of your brain just going along and going, oh man, I want that, oh I want that, oh I want that. And mostly what it wants is dead lifeless foods that are feeding you emotionally. And that's okay, it should be about 20% of what you eat. Because we need to feed all our bodies, spiritually, physically, mentally, every aspect of our bodies need to be in balance. And if one of those is out of balance, everything goes out of balance. So I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.